Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Just outside of Musselbrook, New South Wales, resides a vintage collector of cars, motorcycles, farming equipment, and all things mechanical in between. And you're about to see this legend on this week's episode of Classic Restos. First, we start here at the Denman and District Heritage Village, New South Wales, where Jeff has set up some of his collection. And later in today's episode, I'm gonna take you to Jeff's property where apparently there's a 1,600 square metre shed full of wow. But now, here's a little information about the man himself. Meet Jeff Wolfgang, a bit of a legend around these parts. Jeff was born in 1934 and started collecting anything from around 15 years of age during World War II. His father was a milk carrier on a dairy farm and he could fix practically anything. Well, the bolts don't fall far from the tin as Jeff has followed in his father's footsteps as a carbon copy. Jeff lives on his own these days. He has a son nearby and a daughter in New York. He has just a small block of land at 300 acres, quite a bit to mow on a Friday afternoon before the weekend. But it's here where Jeff wakes up every morning with his passion to save history, for now and for future generations. Jeff has a lovely soul, an absolute gentleman to be around. This is some of his story. Well, it's a 1906 French Derrick car, seven horsepower, and it was uh, all in pieces. Well, I tell you, it's all in pieces when I found it at Tamora in New South Wales. A man said, "Would you wouldn't like an old chassis, would you?" And I straight away pricked my ears up and said, "Oh yeah, I'll have a look." And when I, and I paid him £10 for it. And when I got to the farm a while later, he said, I've still got the £10 in my pocket because when you see the remains of it, you won't want it. <laughs> and I said, oh no, that's a, it's a good car. We didn't even know what type of car it was until we found the gearbox in the rubbish tip and it had Derek written on the top of the gearbox. I loaded all the bits in my trailer and brought it home and we spent years researching it and then decided to restore it and made, made the wheels first and oh, made lots of bits for it. There was no radiator, no bonnet, no seat and no bodywork. No wheels, the white ants had eaten all the wheels so I made four wooden wheels for it. And, and then in the meantime, it didn't have an engine. So I, had, I looked all over the country for an engine. I couldn't find one in Australia. Found a few that weren't suitable because this is a one cylinder car. I eventually found, I kept riding to the car clubs in England. And uh, I found a man that had a, an engine in his car over there. His was a 1903 car, and the engine that he had in it was too late. It was 1906, it suited this car, and he arranged to, if I paid for an engine that he could buy for his 1903 car in France, he'd give me his engine. One day, the engine arrived in Sydney, and I was so happy, I went down in Sydney and got it. It was the right one for the car. The ignition, it's got a piece of barbed wire for a high tension ignition wire. And the wire put that on because I'm a farmer and all farmers like barbed wire. And that's a good talking point. <laughs> we went on lots of rallies with it. I mean, I've taken it down to, New to Albury in Victoria and up to Bundaberg in Queensland. 
and lots of places in New South Wales. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. And there it is. It's a 1916 Power Plus Indian motorbike. And how I got it was that I had a, I had a Derrick engine, a racing, a big racing car Derrick engine. And a Francis Ransley in Tasmania had a, a car that needed the engine. So I swapped him the motorbike for the Derrick engine. And it stood in, we went down to Tasmania and got it from Francis and it stood in my shed for years and years at home and a, another fellow in Denman, a local restorer in Denman, he said, uh, I'll, he wanted, I had a Harley Davidson in pieces as well. And he said, if, 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 uh, if I restore that Power Plus Indian for, for, him, for you, will you give me the Harley Davidson? And we, we struck a deal. And he did, he brought all the pieces, we brought all the pieces into town <laughs> and uh, it was all rusty and, and he, over the, about six months, he painted it and, and put it, he didn't really put it together, he painted it and I did the fuel tank and he put the tyres on <clears throat> and we brought it up here and put it in the museum. It's not quite finished yet, we've got to fix the clutch and put the transfer on the tank, but it's a lovely bike. They were called Power Plus because <coughs> when they built the, those Power Plus in 1916, they, the, the test rider took it for a run around the, around the paddock in America or the test flight. And when he came back, he said, man, this thing's got Power Plus. And that's how they got their name. They're quite a famous Indian. Years ago, BSA built more bikes than anyone in the world. Beautiful handcrafted, proper works of art. Real enthusiasts understand, and Shannon's of course. Young Mick's passion's a bit high tech for me, but deep down, it's the same. And Shannon's understand that as well. Which is why Shannon's insure our bikes, cars, and now, even our home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. The locals out here warned me. I've seen lots of things on classic restos, but I don't believe that I have quite seen this, particularly not in Australia. This is, I have no words. <laughs>
This is a self-opening gate invented by Mr Thorley at Mount Thorley. He got sick of opening his gates, so when he came along in the horse and cart, he came along and that and the horse it unlatches the latch on the gate and when he gets to there it opens the gate for him. He goes through and when he gets to this end the same thing happens, reverse happens and the gate shuts. This is an amazing machine. It gives, makes you a cup of tea in the morning. You put metho in the burner and you put water in the kettle and you put your cup there with your tea in it and when the ring, when the bell rings in the morning, it, the, the kettle boils and the pours the tea out for you. And it rings the bell to tell you, tea's made. There's a shop in Dem and this, it's to take the money up to the secretary. The, the, shek, the shop had three of these and you put the money in the, in the till and you pull the cord back and it sends the money up to the secretary. And she, she puts the change in and puts the change in the thing and sends it back there with a docket on the bottom. This, this, we do, uh, this came off pinch from Port Arthur in Tasmania. This goes around the dog's collar so the convicts couldn't escape. This is a milking machine. This is a clever thing. You put this underneath the cow, each one. You put two leather straps over the cow's back. And when you get all the teats adjusted on the teacup, you turn the handle and it milks the cow into the bucket. Let me tell you about this engine. It's, the, it's an 1883 gas engine. It's one of the oldest engines in Australia. It used to print the newspaper in Singleton, the budget newspaper. And it was originally bought for a gas works in Singleton. And it goes, but it needs hydrogen to make it run. We've had it running a couple of times. And a lot of people are very interested in this end because it's the oldest one in Australia. There's 40 tractors along the top wall of the shed, right along the top wall there. All different makes. About half of them go. The other half, other half awaiting restoration. <laughs> That's a Bowser my dad built when he had the trucks. There's lots of push bikes here as well. That's an old chair came from Bathurst for the invalid. You can put the invalid steers it about, or you can tow the invalid around. This push bike, this tandem is interesting because the local picture theatre people in Denman, they got married in 1919 and they went on their honeymoon and they rode this, this, this tandem from Denman to Maitland on their honeymoon. He told me himself, the man, Mr Margin. I was always eyeing it off. He had it in his shed at, at his, where I used to board and go to school, but he would never let me get it down. <laughs> that wooden machine there, that's a sheep shearing machine. Morris, yeah, that's a little low light Morris minor car. Our kids used to drive that up to the bus stop. Not very powerful. We, we had three kids and the neighbours had four. We got all the kids in it, couldn't get up the hill. <laughs> Had to get out and walk, but by the them they made up for it on the way down. <laughs> this is a Vulcan truck here. It used to cart the, the the butter from Jerry's Plain to Singleton from the butter factory. It's got a boat on the back with milk cans in it. It's a 1908 model. This is an interesting thing, Fletch. It's an old fumigator. Our grandfather used to have it to fumigate the rabbits. You put a fire in it and make gas, and you wheel it round the mountain. And you, when, you get, when you get to the burrow, you put a hose down the burrow and you blow the gas down the burrow and it fumigates the rabbits. You can, you can pick it up and wheel it to the next burrow. The it, grandfather's boys didn't like wheeling it up the mountain. It was too heavy, they said. That's, that's a little standard eight car, it is. Belonged to one of the workmen here. And he got old and he, he used to go to town and get drink too much and he, he bent it up a bit and he, I swapped him four bales of hay for it because he had a cow and it was a drought time and he appreciated, the cow appreciated the, the hay and he gave me the little car. That's a GMC, 1929 GMC truck. It came from Denman Sawmill. They had a sawmill in Denman right in the middle of town. And that's the truck he used to cart the timber with. Well, my dad bought that as a little touring car off a share farmer that was here. And he, him and mum drove that to Sydney. 
when it was a little car, a little where they had a little hood on it, and they drove it all the way down the putty road in the, it was, wasn't gravel those days, it was, it was gravel and dusty. They pulled up in front of the Australia Hotel in Sydney and the bet butler came out and said, you can't stop here. <laughs> and Dad said, oh, we'll move on then. <laughs> they were covered in dust. Fancy that. It's a federal truck. It came from up at Scone. Goodwas owned it and they used to cut their wool into Scone, put it on the railway. I've got a photo of that when it was brand new, the two people driving it, sitting up in the seat with collar and tie on <laughs> and the load of wool on the back. That's a 1941 Maple Leaf. That was our cattle truck. We used to cart the cattle and the sheep to market with it. I drove that a lot, a lot to Maitland. Every week, cart grandfather's cattle too. Still goes. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. And if you own a classic, <laughs> it's, a, it's an understatement in here. Make sure you pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And if you haven't yet discovered the Shannon's Club, there is many hours of material there awaiting you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Now, Jeff, I don't know if I've quite seen anything like this before in Australia. It's amazing. This is the 1,600 square metre shed, correct? Yes, yes it is. And it's taken your life so far to fill it up. Yes, I built it in 1998. I started building it in 1998 because right. I had all this stuff here. A lot of it was in the weather and it needed protecting. And I, I tried to get a, a, an example of what it could be like in Denmark because the people, I could talk to them and tell them I got a lot of stuff, but it didn't ring a bell unless they could see it all in a building. So yeah. that's the idea of it. I think it's amazing what you've done. You've got so much stuff in here, yet the dirt, the dirt floors are quite open. You can, you can walk around quite okay without, uh, well, you know, banging your head on something in, in, uh, in a few seconds if you're not really careful of where you're going. But I just can't believe how much different stuff you've got in here. Well, this is a big white and poppy engine that I had and I, I didn't know what to do with it and when this Vauxhall chassis came along I thought well it didn't have an engine the Vauxhall so I thought I'll put I lengthened the Vauxhall chassis a bit and I put the big engine in and I'm in the process of getting it going that's the carburetor the person I got this engine off said he used to run it on gas because it used a lot of petrol <laughs> so but I'm going to get it going running on petrol it's 11.5 litres in capacity, six cylinder, five inch bore and six inch stroke. It's an old engine, 1908 it is, a veteran engine. Everybody that sees it wants it. So I thought I'd better make use of it or I'll end up losing it. <laughs> I think it's a, it's, a, it's a dough making machine from the Denman Baker shop. And I think it was used in 1922 and it mixes up the dough to make the bread, and I can show you how it goes. I can start it up for you. Just turn it on. It's an old Harley Davidson. It's a single cylinder motor Harley Davidson. They call them a pup. I got it at an auction sale out at Cassilis. I got a few spare parts with it and I'm putting it together. I got a lot of the bits, bits for it. The seat, the seat and everything. I'll get it to go one day, make a match for the Indian in the museum. All these things work off water power before electricity and this is a kitchen sink and I got them sitting on the side of the kitchen sink. When you turn the tap on, the water on, the water drives all these things. That's a fan to keep you cool. That's a fan to ventilate the toilet. This is the grinder to sharpen the knives and this thing mixes your cakes for you. 
all done by water power. Came from a local village close by and they used to use it. Milk the cows, a lot better than doing it by hand. Well, I'll tell you about this lathe, Fretz. It's an old lathe I got from a chap in Musselbrook. It's homemade, but it's my favourite lathe because it's so useful. It's nice and true. The fella made it, but it can, I use it a lot and it goes. There it's going. And it's a good thing. Yes, it's a beaut lathe, this. It goes too. It's variable speed. I can speed it up. You just work this lever and make it go quick or slow. I use it a lot too when I got enough time. <laughs> In Africa they have no money to buy torch batteries. So they get a great big rock like this and they get an old push bike and they wind the, the rock up a tree, up a palm tree. They wind it up the palm tree like this, see, with a pulley on the push bike wheel. And a bit this, as on the way down, on the way down, the rock turns a generator and they've got light to read by at night time. These are hydrants from the Denman Railway Station. There was one each end of the station and they were used to put the water in the steam train from the tank at the Denman Station. And they, they, they're, they're both made in 1913 or some, 1907 in Sydney, at Mort Docks in Sydney, and they're heavy. And they, when they put the new r r railway line through Denman, they threw them out and they were going to scrap them and I took pity on them. I said, they should be saved, them in history. This is a Graham Brothers Dodge truck. It is my dad's first milk truck. He used to be a milk carrier and carry the, the cream to Denman from here and put it in, take it to the factory. And they used to only take the cream in. He didn't need a very big truck. Probably before I, yeah, well before I was born. 1926, he started carrying the cream in. Well, that's the shed, that was a lorry shed album cattle truck lorry shed it was really an army hut that was only last only supposed to last the time of the war but dad bought a couple and put them up and they, they lasted for 50 years but eventually it cassumbled and I built that big shed up there to try and take its place but there's still a shed there full full of things this is the house where I live it was built in 1908 when all the other dairy farmers' houses were built along the river here, and it's been there ever since. Got added to a little bit till the family grew up, and and that's it. Slash, this is a windcock that came from the on top of the church in Scone, and the steeple got rotten, and they took it down, and they didn't put it back up. They threw it at the Scone rubbish tip, and I found it and picked it up. What a, what a shame to throw that away. I thought. We're over here now, we've come across from the weathercock to the pump. This is a petrol pump, this one. Pump, put your, pump the petrol up and put it in your car. That's only an ordinary petrol pump, but this one, it's special. Extra special, this one. It's an oil bowser. When you pull it down, you've got all these things to fill your car with oil. Seven different, eight different pipes in there. It's called a bowser, and it's oil, all different brands of oil. You put it in your car and you catch all the drips down in there. And you can lock it up at night time. It's, it's, everybody wants this, it's very rare. Jeff, I just want to thank you so much for inviting us out to your property here this afternoon. You've got no idea how many laughs we've had here this afternoon with this man right here. Um, a eclectic collection of, I don't know how to describe what you've got here but it is absolutely amazing. I guess it would be, there's a variety, isn't there? There is, and I yeah. want to thank you again for your time. No problem. I hope you've had a bit of fun this afternoon, yeah, have you, Jeff? Have, yeah, my word, I have learned a yeah. lot, all about movies and pretty <laughs> different things you do. Yeah, good.
All right. Well, thanks very much, Jeff. And I look forward. You take care of yourself. I will. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah. When we get our new setup. And there you all, go. All set up nice and tidy. You got to love that inspiration, don't you? All right. You good on you, Jeff. Got to keep up the keep. Somebody's got to do it. Well. How do we describe an episode of classic restos such as this? What an incredible man Jeff Wolfgang is. He showed us some of his collection in town and then 10 kilometers away from town to his 300 acre property here, we saw part of the shed. And as I mentioned earlier, I just don't know how to describe what we have seen today. And for watching the episode, we'd barely be 10% of what Jeff has here on his property. We're making our way through the Upper Hunter on these episodes of Classic Restos, and there'll be another one on next week's show. Speaking of which, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.